Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. It's your brother, J.D. Nijah. Norwalk, California. Drove out to um, my buddy's sick. I'm going to mow his lawn. This is uh, <laughs> this is gardener heaven over here. Rows and rows and rows of houses with lawns. There, California is the land of grass. Let me tell you, that's why I was a gardener for so long. Cause it's it's not an easy job, but um, it's an honest living. Um, let me turn it around. Hey, good morning. Jeff Deloach, Bible teaching with Jeff Deloach. I'm I'm at the um, middle school here. This is where the mother of my first child went to school. Who's going to be 45 this year. <laughs> Go figure. Um, Jeremiah 23, 33. Um, Heavenly Father, we love you. We come before you. We praise you. Uh, we know that you care about us and you want the best for us. We know you're a God that's near. You're in our hearts. You're in our spirit. And when we have your spirit, we know what to do. We know how to maneuver. We know your will be done, not ours. And knowing that, we know that everything is good. We praise you. We honor you. I bow before you. I cast my crowns at your feet. It's all about you. Amen. That's funny. I, I heard someone, you know how I am. I listen to different things and, um, I heard someone say, don't bow, don't bow. Um, we're not supposed to bow to angels, but, um, I was thinking about it because he said, you don't bow, you bow to God, you better keep your head down. That's my opinion. Keep your head down and, and let him, um, let him guide your paths. So, uh, I hope you all are doing well. I hope you know that you are every spirit, especially the ones that come to this channel. If you come to this channel and you can put up with listening to me and um, pay your patience. So I wanted to bring that up. Um, see. When you see some of these folks out here that you're um, you're dealing with, you know it might be someone that you care about. That, and I and I'm not saying just about the Bible. You're you're trying to um, you're trying to show them basic love, basic consideration concern your um you're being kind and um you know in your heart you know that you have something more to give to them than they than what they have see cuz i think one of the hardest things about being a um a knowledgeable christian or a knowledgeable, I don't like to use the word Christian because it's not always accurate um, to what is really going on. It's more about your spiritual well-being, how close you are to God. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a lesson on being near to God, but I wanted to kind of point something out about the patience that we have. Um. 
Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm on the verge of getting sick, too. Um, my body's fighting it, though. I, I like that. Um, this patience. Some people don't have the patience to um, sit and hear you out. You know, you're trying, you, you wish you could just, if they would just give you some time and just give themselves some time with you. I don't know if any of you are understanding what I'm saying. Uh, to be in relationship, to be in relationship with someone, you have to be able to relate. And so... I think I'm just going to put it in context for myself. Maybe you can understand better. So a lot of the women that I've fallen in love with over my life. There was. There was things that I could see about their soul. I could see about them that needed. There was crying out, literally crying out for understanding, crying out for some compassion, crying out for some um, resolution. There's things that they had, most of them had been abused or traumatized and things like that. So what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is some of these people that we're drawn to as empathetic God people, people of the book, we're drawn to these people because we see the pain in them and the hurt. And um, the hardest thing is to get these people to sit and look at themselves and look at what it is that's manifesting to us. We see it. They don't see it. They think they're hiding they think they can hide this shit from us. But a lot of times we see right through that pain and it's confusing to us because they don't really want to get better. I think I went into this before. God, he wants us to give our pain to him and to admit it. That's what it means to confess your sins it's not it's not so much the things that you do it's the things that you could do different if you if you could just know better you would do better so if, i hope you guys understand what i'm saying is um it's the reason it's so difficult to be us is because we can see so clearly some of these things in other people because we were really willing to look in the mirror and go, damn, um, I need to work through this hurt that I have. This, Why am I so, in my case, um, I've, had a, I've had a hard time following through with certain tasks and, and goals because my dad never gave me any direction. And so that was one of the big things that I had to deal with, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I was becoming a, I was trying to transition that next developmental stage. You go, you go through stages, developmental stages in your life, you know, from sucking your thumb to riding a bike to going to school and getting your chores done to getting a job and being responsible to becoming a full-fledged adult, taking care of yourself. Um, and then once you take care of yourself, you're trying to strive to take care of others. And um, if you're a normal, well-adjusted human being, you should at my age be at the point where um, you can take care of yourself and do some things for others. So that being said, I know I'm jumping all around. I'm sorry. Um I'm just trying to figure out how to be effective. And of course, I'm having a hard time because 
what we're we're almost to 300 subscribers. Thanks you guys for subscribing. I'm gonna be really excited when I get 300 subscribers. We're almost there. So um, keep telling your friends about the videos. And um, I'm gonna keep doing shorts, and I, that seems to be working. But anyway, let me get to the meat of the lesson. So the point I, I'm trying to make with all that lead in is that um, we have a God that's near us. He hears us. I mean, the closer you get to him, the more he'll hear you and the more you'll hear him. And when you're honest with yourself, and other people, truth, telling the truth is essential. Let me get this. Jeremiah, where am I? Sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I have all these scriptures written on here. Jeremiah 23, 23. <laughs> Look at this. All that notes I... I have I'm so I'm so high tech <laughs> so high tech um 23 23 21 so what do we what's the theme the theme is God is close to you God is near he's in you so he knows every He knows everything about you. And so part of what I'm talking about is these people that are hiding from us, they're hiding from us. They don't want us to get to know them. They can't relate. There's no relationship. They think life is transactional. I'll do what I need to do to get what I want. I'll do what I need to do to get what I want. I'm just going to do what I, I need to do to get what I want. What God wants you to see is you wanting relationship without wanting anything else. Let me say that again. What God wants to see from you is wanting relationship without wanting anything else. That's that just goes, woo, right over people's head. Well, why would I be in relationship if I'm not getting anything? The relationship is what you get. And that's why a lot of people think they have a relationship with God, but they're all, they're all cuckoo in their head. They think, oh, if I say I love God, he's going to rapture me out of here and I'm not going to have to put up with the bullshit. No, you're going to have to put up with the bullshit until you realize you should be looking for relationships, not ways out. Do you hear, do you guys hear what I'm saying? This is good shit. This is, I'm not good at explaining things, but if you just give me a second. That's the point I'm trying to make. He wants you in relationship with him. Let me read it. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Who are these people? These are the people that don't know, don't have a relationship with God. And they're like, huh, how do I prophesy? I'll read the Bible. I'll tell people about Harpazzo. We'll go about the Trinity. I'll tell them how beautiful they are. I'll make myself look godly. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's all in their head. They have no heart is what he's saying. But verse 22, but if they had stood in my counsel, what's that mean? If they would have stood up and actually listened to me, if they would have actually came to me and said, what do I do, Lord? It's your will, not mine. Listen. If they would have, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, right? My, hear his words, not their words. And that's what, that's what it's. So what, what am I saying here? I'm saying not only am I having a hard time relating to these people I love that I come in contact with that I want to have relationship with. I want to give them what I have. I want to give them the love of God. I want to give them my compassion. I want to give them my wisdom. I want to give them my might. I want to give them, I want to give them because I'm, I have so much. 
I'm overflowing. Seriously. And what makes it so hard is I'm all bound up because nothing is, I mean, not nothing. I'm sorry. You guys are receiving it. So I got to remember, you guys are receiving some of this. Some of you are receiving it. You're receiving the, the wisdom. You're receiving the knowledge. You're receiving the might. You're receiving the blessings of my prayers. You're, re, you're taking it. You're taking it. Yes. That, yes. Yes. But the same thing that's happening on the micro level with, I don't know which is the micro and which would be the macro, the smaller or the bigger, but the same thing that's happening in my life where there's very few people actually unloading the bread from my truck. I'm like, take it, man. I'm carrying all this bread and all this wine and all this oil. Can you just take some off my hands? Uh, what's it going to do for me? Fuck you then. Fuck you. Beat it. They don't even know the value of what I'm carrying. So the same thing with YouTube here. Here we are actually sitting on a throne of gold and no one's, no one's even coming around. They're like, that's not the gold I want. Verse 23, I am a God, let me let me finish 22, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil of their doings. What is Jeremiah, what is the Lord telling Jeremiah? These people want everything that they shouldn't want and they don't want what they should want. I am... Am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God far off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? I didn't know it was going to say that. That's the point of the message. He knows you so well. He wants you to admit to him who you are. Even if I'm who I am. I can't tell you to, to tell, him, tell him you're like me. No, you got to tell him who you are. You got to know who you are. And when people come to you, you have to be who you are. Be the authentic self that God made you. He made you the way you are. Be proud of that. Be the, be the person you are. If you're a sweet-hearted, loving, kind person, be that. If you're a mean motherfucker like me, be that. I try not to be, but I have a mean streak. And I'm trying to tamper that and I'm trying to be mean in the right ways. I don't have to be nice. God made me mean for a reason. Let me see what I got. All right, 18. So what's he saying? I'm close to you. I'm close. I'm right here. You can't hide from me. So what are these people doing that we're trying to that we're trying to relate to? What are they doing that we're trying to have a relationship with? They're hiding. And every time, you know, I don't want to get in a long rambling thing about what's going on with me, with my friend, but um, she, you know what they do. As soon as, as soon as they feel like they're going to start getting close to you, their defenses kick in. This narcissistic, self-motivated, egotistical self-willed animal inside of them, the serpent person, the the snake person, s s slithers off. And you're like, I, what? I thought we were just, we were almost there. And then they, they go slither off into the bushes and you're like, I'm tired of going into the bushes looking for this fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be 63 this year. I don't want to be fucking around in the fucking weeds. I used to just run out there. Where'd you go? I shall not. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Said the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth? Said the Lord. He's everywhere, people. Why would you lie to a person 
when God knows exactly what you're doing, why would you hide? Why? Look, this is who I am. Am I wearing am I wearing some fancy outfit or in a library full of books to make you think that oh I've studied the world and I've I've studied the world. I don't need a bunch of books to, to prove that. Either you can hear me or you can't. I'm a poet and a writer by trade. A poet looks at the world honestly. That's what a poet does. I have heard what the prophet said. The prophet sighed lies in my name saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. See, I didn't plan on this. It always comes back to the same story. That's why I do the lead in so you can see that I I don't I, I pull up a couple of scriptures. It's gonna say what I say. Gosh darn it. What did I say at the beginning? These people are deceiving not only themselves, they're they're trying to deceive you into thinking there's something they're they're not. I can see right through these people. And when I call them out on their bullshit, they slither off into the weeds like a fucking snake. Instead of just standing up and going, yeah, you know, you're, you're right, dude. Thanks for, thank you for loving me. Right? Just because someone's telling you the truth doesn't mean they don't like you. If they're telling you the truth, that means they care. It's not easy to tell someone the truth. So, where am I at? Where am I at? I'm going against all these false prophets. I'm going against these false people. Everywhere you go is a story of falsehood. It's a fake ass fucking world. No one's real. Very few people can go, I'm an asshole. I'm, I'm a mean person. I'm too sweet for my own good. I'm too, you know what I'm saying. Gosh, darn it. What, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor. These people that are talking about dreams on YouTube. Oh, I had a dream. I had a dream of this. I had a dream of that. Do I ever tell you about my dreams? Very, very, very seldom. It has nothing to do with the Bible. I'm just telling you, I had a weird dream. I've been having a lot of weird dreams. I usually have dreams about my vehicle. I, I must worry about my truck way too much. Because I have, the other night I had a dream, my, I went surfing and my truck got stuck in the surf line. I don't know, I was backed in and we were surfing or something. I came in, there's fucking water up to the windows and my truck's in the sand, in the water. That's a fucked up dream. <laughs> that's a fucked up dream. That's, so that's, that's how I feel right now, like I'm stuck in the sand and the water's rising. So there's, there's a dream for you. Fucking water is rising and I'm stuck in the fucking sand on the beach. <laughs> it's not my word like a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. That's why these people don't want to have a relationship with me. And that's why there's only you guys here because I'm making you look at yourselves. Not making you, but if you can actually sit through the lessons and you have the patience to listen to me, you'll be like convicted in a way that I'm not trying to hurt you at all. 
I'm trying to love you into looking at yourself. God is near. He's not. I'm right here. I have the heart of God. I do. I really do. Why? Because I know who I am. I'm not trying to get you to believe I'm anything other than I'm not. I'm a motherfucker. I'm a, I'm a motherfucker. Believe me. Tribe of Benjamin. Let me see what I got. I'll be back. I'm going to I'm going to do another one on God is near. What's it say? Am I a god at hand, said the Lord, and not a god far afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Basically saying, aren't I aren't I in your face all the time? So as a as a believer, we're supposed to be not being afraid to push our way in. And if they say anything back to us that's true and it hurts and it's like, ouch, I am that way. You take it and you admit it. All right, you guys, I love you. I'll be back. We're talking about a God at hand, a God that is near. And I'll get some scriptures and we'll, um, we'll just expound on this a little bit more. I love you guys. Peace and grace. Subscribe if you Wandered on this channel. J.D. Nigel, Word of Truth, Bible Teaching with Jeff Deloach. I'm out.